Good evening. It's been a while since I've done a video and I decided I wanted to do one on knife sharpening just to get back into the swing of things. I've got two websites that I haven't been working on and I need to get something started. So anyway, um, there's a lot of videos out there on knife sharpening and every one of them will get your knife sharp pretty much. But this has always been an interest of mine so I decided I'd do a video. My favorite tools are pretty much I like to use sandpaper on a block like this. This is a half inch piece of plexiglass. Um, anything flat will do fine. Um, use this diamond hone as you can see it's got quite a bit of wear so I've used it. Leather, some polishing compound and what I want to demonstrate tonight is this box cutter. If you want to see what it takes to get something sharp, the bevel or whatever, look at a box cutter blade. Those people know how to make sharp um, blades. And it also has, we can't really see it here, but it has a perfect example of what we would call a, a micro bevel. And all a micro bevel is, is you would have, say, just a straight edge coming in. It's the case of the box cutter, it would come in like this. And then all of a sudden, it cuts in at one more angle. That is the micro bevel. On a chisel, wood chisel, it would be like this. And then one more bevel like that, just add it in. The purpose for the uh, micro bevel takes a little explaining, so let's get some room here. The uh, perfect edge would be something that looks like this. Let the camera adjust here. It's acting crazy on me. Hold on. Get something back in here it can see. focusing fine just a minute ago. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. We'll go from there. The perfect edge, as we say, it would be one that just came right straight down. Goes all the way down to one molecule. That was it. That would be as sharp as you could get a, a blade. Um, the problem is most of us tend to do all sorts of things. We wind up with blades that the edges are like this or um, maybe like this problem is at the very bottom we don't have this fine point. No matter how we do it we wind up with an edge that looks like that which is not going to cut anything. The flip side of that is through sharpening we can wind up with a blade that is comes down like that. And this is what we call a wire edge and it can work back and forth and give us all sorts of problems which is not what we want. We want that perfect edge and that is the goal. So rather than try to sharpen something like this that requires a certain type of hand motion, let's demonstrate on this one. It has a straight edge. should be relatively simple. Using a diamond hone, I would generally hold it like this. And if, the, if this video doesn't come out right, it's the first time I've used this camera, so I'm trying. When I sharpen a knife that I've never sharpened before, I'm not used to, I'll start with the blade laying down, watching the edge right here where it touches. And you can see a gap, and I'll slowly raise it up until I no longer have a gap. At that point, I know I'm pretty close to matching the bevel. So at that, when I'm happy with that, I just start to home. I flip it over, I get the same bevel again, and I go down. I've done it 
many times through the year so I'm kind of used to holding a bevel so my speed is going to pick up and I'll just keep doing this then I'll, I'll test the blade um, I know you got all the safety guys out there saying you can't do this or that but you got to touch the blade if you if you're moving your thumb across backwards if it doesn't feel slick feels like something there it's because there's a wire edge there and we've got to get rid of it there's no point in uh, continuing to keep going and just building more wire edge at that point is when I will actually lighten my strokes being very careful to hold the same bevel never doing this bevel back and forth you'll wind up with an edge that looks like this and it doesn't work and I'll keep going until I can barely feel that wire edge and it's practically all the way gone but usually when I'm doing this like I said I prefer sandpaper I'll start out this one is a 600 grit <coughs> Excuse me. This is a 400. But that requires, obviously, it's paper. You can't make this type of motion. So I've, I'm quite used to going a little bit backwards. And I've got something on my paper. About like a rock. All right. I'll just start sweeping backwards and forwards. Slowly honing until I can. I can't find that wire edge anymore. When that's gone, then I know that I've done what I want. I have to hold it upwards. Now, if you wanted an even more polished edge, you could go up to the 600 grit. But for most people, this would be very sufficient. And I'm not telling you this is the only way to sharpen. It's the way I like to sharpen. It's what I've got used to. Um, I don't have to go buy a new diamond hone every time it gets worn. I just grab another piece of sandpaper and it works great. What was there? There was something I wanted to say a minute ago. I'll get back to it. Oh, this is what I wanted to mention. I'm in a brain spaz tonight. We want an edge that has a bevel that's relatively sharp. People give you all sorts of, uh, it should be a certain degree, this degree. Here's the thing. If you take a nail that has an edge like that and go to shove it into some wood, it's going to go a lot easier than a nail that has a point like that. Even if we've managed to get all the way down to one molecule on both of them, that nail will go into the wood a lot easier than that nail will, will simply because we're displacing less material. And it's the same way with the cutting edge. I took this belt, uh, the edge here, and actually ground a very sharp bevel. I could sharpen it up, I could make it shave. But if I went to cut wood with it, it felt like the edge wasn't very sharp at all. So that's, a, you know, when I first got this knife, I found this knife, uh, got out of a car one day. The bevel, as you can see here, is, well, it's this wide. Whenever I first found it, it wasn't but about that wide. So I started, I put it on a, a hone, and I started to uh, working the blade until I had this bevel and it cuts a lot better than it used to. In fact this is one of my favorite knives now. But I, Back to where we were. I keep going until I'm satisfied that I can not do anything better for this edge. And You can actually take in your time because my main point here is not the materials that you use. They do make a difference. But the big difference is holding the same bevel and keep doing so and working down until the wire edge is gone. 
And once you've done that, then a lot of people like to use these these hones. Um, and you'll start working it the same way you were, holding the same bevel. And all we're doing, there, there's two things, two schools of thought on this. One is you get a hone that's hard enough that it doesn't actually remove any material. It just realigns the material on the edge of the blade into a more perfect condition. Other hones like to actually remove. Personally, I like to feel no resistance at all and know that I'm not removing any material. I'd rather do material removal with the uh, either the sharpening stone or the, the sandpaper. Now, if you do this really hard, you're going to bend the edge of the blade, and which will put you right back into the wire, having a wire edge again. And this, this takes time, it takes a little bit of practice. And at this point, I cannot feel anything on this edge. So, I actually want to polish this edge now. So I take a little bit of the polishing compound. Coat the leather fairly good. I used to not use the polish compound. I used to just use the leather by itself. And I'm, I never have my equipment laying down on the table or over a table like this where for me this is awkward. Everyone has to find their comfortable spot, and this is not mine, but it does pretty decent for the video. Now one thing, whenever you're using the leather or the stones or anything that you're doing, you never want to come out at the end and roll. Even the leather itself will polish the edge off of your blade. You could have a... a an edge that could shave a hair and not even feel it and roll it across this leather and it will screw that edge up to where it won't cut a hair again. A lot of people when they test the blades they'll actually take it and go down their arm. Over the years and I don't know if this one will do it or not but over the years I have because I used to sharpen knives so much where I used to work um, my arm was bald so I decided that a knife if it couldn't shave the hair that I picked out and pop that hair off my hand to where I couldn't even feel it which I know you can't see it but it's popping the hairs off but if you can't select the hair that you want to cut and shave that hair and that hair only with no pressure then your knife is not there yet but I welcome any comments and I'm sure there will be a lot of discussions as people look at it thank you very much